Hello, Jan here once again, ladies and gentlemen. We are in part three of getting Facebook to give us money, clients, sales. It's what we all want. So again, fast paced here. We're not getting into some deep strategies, with, which by the way, is what we start with first. Now, these are things that we do through client engagements. Uh, this is more of a simple training video series that I put together here to get you some top level information on how to navigate the Facebook uh, ads manager and relevant to tools and systems. Um, if you want a deeper dive and building out a solid strategy from the get go that uh, dials into demographics, technographics, psychographics, developing ultimately the various profiles against your products or services, creating messaging, creatives, all the strategies need to be need to be built up before you start. Happy to do that. There's a link uh, under this video that you can engage with uh, when you're ready. But for now, we're going to dig right in. So I talked a little bit about how to build up customer list audiences in part one. I talked about building out lookalike audiences and I'm going to link all the part one, twos and threes here together with this final video. But um, let's go ahead now and implement a simple setup for Facebook with a lookalike audience from one of the strategic placements that we talked about earlier in terms of how we import that data and how we now can reuse it to our advantage and not beat the algorithm, but help the algorithm really find our data, our data points from, uh, from millions of data points. So uh, what we have here is a basic layout of the standard Facebook ads manager as seen in January 2025. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new campaign here. And as you may know, Facebook has a number of different campaign types. And by the way, this also gets you into the various strategic decisions that needs to be made beforehand, right? So right now we're sort of semi-hacking into this, but you really need to think about what is your goal or goals, right, before you start. And so I'm not going to talk about uh, these individually here right now. Just um, let me tell you that out of... 96.8% of all client engagements, uh, we focus on the leads and sales. Uh, because the bottom line is, that's what the clients want. Now you can get through, to, you know, to sales and back end data through other uh, campaign types, uh, but it is a completely different strategy that needs to be implemented and it's not as fast. So for now, we're going to select leads. And by the way, uh, before I continue here, let me tell you that there is some setup similar to uh, to Google, similar, similar to LinkedIn. There's some setup that needs to be happening before you launch this that deals with deployment of script code, which is ultimately in this uh, world, Facebook Pixel. You can read up uh, more about that. Uh, just simply type Facebook Pixel setup or configs, and there's tons of information about how to do that. But it has to be deployed because the lead campaign is going to be looking for that particular trigger point inside your funnel uh, and, and your website. So let's dig in. We don't want to let Facebook choose any of our options. We want to actually control this. So what I do here typically is I will say this is a, a leads campaign and it's a USA. And I like to start off with a date. And since we like to start it in the morning, not uh, in the afternoon like we are right now, uh, it'll be tomorrow. So um here we go. There's nothing more really to do over here. So we just hit the next button that's off your screen here. And I'm going to put here uh, lookalike 1% uh, USA. And again, uh, just a, a date here for uh, informational purposes. And we're not going to go instant forms. Instant forms, by the way, is a very viable option under the leads campaign type. But um, we don't really want to do that here because we want to get the full website experience. Now, there's a lot of pros and cons with this as well. The pro is it's fast and easy. It just opens up within the Facebook ecosystem right there in your browser or, or on your phone. Uh, but it tends to be less quality. Uh, but again, generalizing here, this has to be tested. For now, we're going to go website. 
uh, we want to go maximize number of conversions and we want to select the data set, which by the way, if the pixel is deployed and set up, it will show up here. If not, it's going to show up with a red error message. It's going to ask you to set that up. And we want to focus on the lead objective. Um, so I've deployed some custom code here that actually uh, tells the system, meaning Facebook, when a lead is triggered on a thank you page, that that is actually what we're going to be looking for. So in, in, a sense, in essence, you're just telling the Facebook uh, system, hey, I want more of those people because it's the lead objective that is set up here. And you can look at this and get pretty excited about the opportunity here for leads, uh, conversions in this case, but this is not a um, finite number. You may be running one or two days and get nothing, and on the third day, you get three or four. Uh, again, this is depending on the number of variables, creatives, targeting, budget, and we're not going to go that deep on the uh, strategy C right now. Uh, you can default it to your seven day one click here uh, or seven click one day view. Uh, again, we don't need to get into that strategy either. 20 bucks, that's the default. Uh, typically, I like to start at maybe 30 to 50. Again, this is about speed to market. I mean, I, I have things where I'm testing $5 a day. There's a strategy out there by a friend in the business saying a dollar a day strategy. Uh, I like to get a little bit speed on this, so let's uh, let's leave it at 20. Again, there's a deeper strategy here as well that goes into this, including, hey, how much am I willing to spend to acquire a lead, acquire a customer? And you may decide that $10 is the max you'll pay for a lead, but if you have a high ticket backend, uh, 1000 to $2,500 to $5,000, let's say, you'd be willing to go a lot higher here, right? So it's all about the math in this case. Again, there's a worksheet that we use for this and working with clients on it, but we're not gonna talk about that either. Notice how I'm just like stripping away the details here because what we have found is many of the clients that have tried Facebook and say it simply doesn't work, have not set up the right strategies and defaulted to some of the conversations that we use through our uh, our checklist on our onboarding documents. Um, we continue down. We're going to go to uh, United States for this. Very important. Go ahead and select switch to original audience options. We don't want to use uh, Advantage Plus here. Uh, that's the new Facebook world, but uh, we want to control this and we want to set it up with custom audiences. Uh, I mentioned lookalike audiences. Simply just choose it here. And I'm going to choose my, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and choose the active campaign one. That's based on a list that we had here. So you notice that it's dropping down, right? Well, again, this is a guide, not exact. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we're not going to add any exclusions here. We could like really dial this in, by the way, with exclusions. Another sort of sophisticated strategy opportunity here to, let's say, you want ice cold traffic. You can exclude Facebook. Uh, people have gone to your Facebook page or Instagram or your website and you just purely want this. Um, I don't mess with this too much anymore. It used to be kind of the, the deal of the day, if you will. But it makes a lot of sense if you're really starting to go granular and you do this through testing. I mentioned that a lot, testing, right? Uh, can't get away from that. So uh, our audience is in the 35 to 65 bracket. Um, this is something, again, that you'll have to define uh, all genders. Uh, we're not going to deal with any uh, suggestions about the uh, demographic because we're simply going after lookalike audience in this case. And again, as I mentioned, this is part three of building this audience concept to extract money and dollars from, from Facebook uh, through strategic um, targeting. Uh, so then we simply hit next. Uh, and here we're just going to say, look like add sample one. So you, there's many options. This has come a long way. You have template opportunities here, uh, partnership ads, all of this. We're just going to skip through it. Uh, here's the Facebook page that you want to make sure that you've set up. We're not going to use any um, uh, e-commerce related info here. And now I can go ahead and set up the creative. I can go and enter my website where I want to have people go. So in this case, we're going to uh, do a image ad. You can, f you can scan your website and go through it. 
Um, I simply just like to go and pick an image and uh, uh, we're just going to pick one here. So this was an old one that I tested for uh, for local um, uh, local access here. Um, now, uh, once this has been set up, you can go in and customize this further by actually customizing the ad copy, uh, the ad image rather, to fit, you know, an exact match for stories and reels and things like that. And that's highly recommended. But because this is a top level kind of fast pace uh, um, uh, video, we're not going to do that. Um, then, of course, you want to make sure that you enter the primary text. So what is the ad copy that speaks to your perfect audience in this case? Uh, that, again, is a deeper strategy. Uh, we have scripts and templates and things that we can use um, depending on the industry. Uh, and, of course, you want the headline. The headline is a must-do, must-implement, must-strategize to really dig in and get that level of detail in here. Uh, because again, people who say Facebook ads don't work, they look at the media buyers of Facebook and say, yeah, you guys suck. Okay, if that's the case. And um, hey, yes, of course, you want a strategic copy, the creative that matches that. It needs to be congruent to the landing page. So everything matches. It's kind of a one-to-one. -one. Think of it that way. Uh, but truly, the entire funnel matters because if you get okay leads here, let's say it's simply an okay MQL, which is a marketing qualified lead. Is it really an SQL, a sales qualified lead at that point? Well, it needs to be measured and tracked and your sales team, if you have one or yourself, you need to basically track all of the steps and determine how is your return on ad spend? What is your overall ROI in sort of a timeline here? And what's the lifetime value of that customer? So if you're spending a thousand dollars an ad and you got one client at five thousand, I sort of alluded to this at the top of the of the session here. Well, that's a that's a profitable uh, ad for you. So ultimately, make sure that you have a killer creative that matches all across the funnel experience and that you have a headline that elicits curiosity, uh, infotainment, education. Education is big. Having a video here that explains a little bit about what your service offers is great. You can use retargeting, which is a way to, to um, analyze how much they watched a particular video, go back and present another related offer and position that out to the marketplace. So lots of different strategies here, but I'm going in and simply describing how to configure and set things up. Uh, learn more, download, get a quote. Um, one thing that tends to work very well on Facebook is checklists and, and uh, ebooks and, and simple guides and stuff like that. You can simply then allow that to be an immediate action item. And notice here, instead of learn more, the download um, uh, button changed. And what I noticed here is it, it says uh, form and uh, that is not correct, but let's not worry about that too much right now. Uh, manual upload. It's always a death by demo I've found. Um, so let's go ahead and, uh, okay. So here would be the website that you enter and, uh, yeah, that was looking at the wrong place. So now, now it's going to your website. Notice how the, the text changed here slightly, fill this out, make sure that you implement this correctly according to that one-to-one -one match of congruency, as well as really keep your audience close to mind here. Uh, present a message where you're almost entering their mind as in, huh, I know exactly what they're thinking. And they're thinking, how can he know or she know what I'm thinking right now? You're speaking to them about their deepest desires, problems, dreams, aspirations. You know, PAS is a copywriting formula. It works well on Facebook. Problem, agitate, solve. Great way to look at this. And so I want you to think about that before you just launch any ads out here. But if you have a little bit of budget, it's okay to test some of these things, right? But you need to document it and keep control of everything that you're doing. Uh, we like to pass parameters back to Google. Uh, oh, sorry, back to Google Analytics. Yes, but also to any tracking system that you have. And it allows us to see what kind of ads are working based on the the origin of that click, right? 
So UTM campaign source is a big one. Uh, UTM content uh, keyword um, in the sort of Google nomenclature. And once you're ready here and you've looked it all over, I basically click back and validate everything that has been set up. And uh, so I looked at the campaign. I look at my setup. I see that I have lead. I have set up Oh, uh, one thing that I forgot. Uh, we're going to be always wanting to start in the morning. So uh, the next day. So if you're setting this up, um, we uh, we like to go in the morning. So here we go. So it's going to not start on the 18th, which is today. It's going to start tomorrow at 12.01. So we get the full 24-hour spectrum here. And uh, this is also a nice way of segmenting your launch dates and your launch times. And if you're working with clients, you can set this all up. You can preload everything, set the date to January 21st, and then let them know that's the date we're going live with, share all the associated creatives, all the copy, everything is structured through documentation and onboarding documents. Uh, that's what we do, by the way. And then uh, you can hit publish here and Facebook is gonna sit on this timer and launch it at 12.01 on the 21st or whatever day that is. So um, everything looking good here. And uh, again, we wanna double check before we hit publish. Now you can go back and fix it, of course, or change, but in, anytime you do this, you're resetting the clock and you really don't wanna do this. Um, in this case, we're actually good because we're ahead of time, but you get the idea, right? So uh, the, the technical term here is don't fiddle around too much, right? Get everything set up beforehand, get everything aligned, get the client sign off, all the creatives, everything's good to go. Um, you can put together a training video here of teaching a, a lower end uh, uh, associate or member of your team, even a virtual assistant that loads up all the campaigns and get everything set up uh, for launch. So uh, looks good here. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is I, I typically don't launch with all of the placements out the gate. Uh, I like to focus on definitely the Facebook feed uh, any Instagram or just the Facebook feed because it's the one where you get to get the most traction, the highest clicks, and it will be more expensive, but you have more clarity because when you run the reports inside the Facebook ads manager or any third party tools you have, uh, it's basically, hey, we're looking at the Facebook feed. So, um, and if you do that, then you don't have to worry about sizing and all of that stuff. But, but again, all of this needs to be tested and validated and communicated. Um, so uh, again, we haven't entered any text or copy here, but everything is looking good so far and it is ready to go. So anyway, this is uh, really just a quick walkthrough of how to set up a leads campaign in Facebook using a lookalike audience. Again, we can have that discussion about, um, you know, the various new ways in which Facebook is finding audiences for you. In fact, by default, some of these settings don't apply as much as they did before because Facebook, the algorithm, uh, it, it's actually helping you along the way and it, it wants to expand out your targeting to find more people like X, right? Your perfect ICP, ideal client profile. But, um, but we are using and testing this as you you should with uh, with your with your particular business. But um, this is a, really a very simple way of setting everything up and getting going. But uh, in terms of testing, uh, well, there's a methodology and a framework for that as well. How long do you run an ad campaign for or an ad set? How much money should you spend? How do you track everything? Uh, this is where complexity and uh, where AI is not really going to help you. Although you can do some research, you're going to have to apply it. You can't get away from it. So so this is Jan for now. I think we've gone uh, almost 20 minutes, guys and gals. Always appreciated uh, coming in here. If you like this, if you want to comment, if you want to share some of your success stories and what you found to work here, I'll take it. I really appreciate it uh, very much, in fact and that you gave me your time of day here today, or evening or night. See you later, guys and gals.